Greetings everyone, and welcome back to another installment in the Irish series. A series in which I investigate rather dubious tech products sold on various sites around the web just to see if they're any good. Most of the time they're not, but I like to buy this stuff so you don't have to. I don't think any of my viewers were expecting this video. No one knew about this. I think I did tease it in one of my other videos, but I didn't show this on stream or anything. I found this on my own looking on AliExpress and went, I think I have to purchase this to show all you folks that Soyz is back with a brand new phone that looks strange retro but strange and we all know soys i've reviewed a number of soys phones on the channel before and basically they're just welcome devices that are a little bit fancier sort of you've already seen in the thumbnail what this thing looks like when i seen it for the first time i immediately said to myself that has to be reviewed on the channel and i think someone may have actually told me about this phone in the comments section that this is just launched but i think i may have accidentally forgotten about it until now i'm sorry about that we have a whole big listing to have a look at there's a lot of pictures in it i'll just go over the most important ones all the most funny ones, then we can have a look at this new phone from our friends over at Soy's. So if you want to stick around for that, please buckle up, get yourself a drink. Uh, you've seen the runtime, it's probably going to go for way too long. Feel free to skip along using the timestamps in the description as well as a pinned comment if you don't want to hear the listing and just want to go straight to the unboxing or wherever you'd like to go. It's up to you. Today we're looking at the Soy's W88 Pro 4-inch retro phone 4G network mini smartphone 4600mAh Android 12 dual SIM face ID Wi-Fi Bluetooth FM hotspot GPS OTG. Ah, oh boy. These listings don't get any easier, do they? And currently, this is only $130 Australian for this phone in a configuration of 2 gig RAM and 16 gigs of storage. There is a 3 gig RAM and 64 gig storage version available, but I could not find that. I just decided to go for the 2 gig and 16 gig. And yeah, for $130, which I'll display a quick currency conversion chart just to show you all how much it costs in certain places of the world. And I may as well leave the Indian rupees in the chart for future videos because people appreciate that I've put it there. Here's the folks over there. Good idea of how much this thing costs. Look, for $130, I'm not expecting too much, but for a phone that looks like a retro styled phone, it's kind of cool, but it claims to offer a lot more than that, as you will see very soon. Because Soyz is like Xcody. They're kind of genuine when it comes to the amount of cameras on their phone, because in their quick spec sheet in the listing, they have only one rear camera of this phone is real and can be used normally. The other cameras are decorative. We do not accept disputes about five rear cameras. I'm glad that they're putting this though but instead of putting decorative cameras don't put any at all just leave it as one good camera on the back or spend the extra two cents and put a macro camera or something on there instead of having the four decorative cameras it's just silly but anyways we got the frequency band which promises 4g so we'll have to see if that works with vo lte selling points are the 4600 milliamp hour battery which is a pretty good capacity for the price but it's also mini sized with android 12 on it sports play store and all the good stuff face id gps bluetooth wi-fi hotspot sharing on the go type c audio output other functions calculator alarm clock calendar a memo, keyboard lock, and timer switch. No signs of what processor is in this as of yet. I'm probably thinking it's MediaTek, but we'll have to see. So from this point on is all pictures in the listing. So I'll leave a timestamp on screen if you want to skip past this. But if you want to hear what Soyuz has to say about this brand new phone, then feel free to stick around for what I'm about to tell you, because here is 4G, time passes, the classics are eternal. Mini mobile phone, classic retro body, large memory, flagship, multi-core processor, 4600 milliamp hour, large battery HD video. And there it is. I mean, it looks pretty cool, but uh, you haven't seen the back yet with the five cameras, or well, the four decorative cameras and the one real camera. I like retro design and stuff so I'd love to see how this does perform and if that antenna that's plonked onto the top serves any purpose or not. Retro mobile phone just to love the classic you. The years may be gone but the classics are eternal. There's some dude holding a clearly photoshopped picture to the side of his head and there's the five cameras on the back there looking very S22, S23 ultra looking. And then you got another person just staring at it just there. Hands feel more harmonious. Classic reproduction coordination. Classic copy design. Are they straight out just saying that they copied a design? Fair enough then. Length 147.8 millimeters, 51 millimeters by 27 millimeters. Slender proportion with mirror cover. Yin yang, a grip, all in the hand. I tried to not look at this listing as much as I could in order to save my reactions for when I start filming. And what I'm thinking in my head is, what the hell am I reading? I've been doing this for years and I still don't know what any of this means. Speaking of which, really tough fuselage, polymer ABS material support, ABS environmental protection material with high impact strength and good insulation, layer by layer protection, packaged motherboard, even in bad environment can maintain performance stability. There it is, just 
crushing a part of a volcano or something? Well, what is going on with this? But wait for it, it gets better. One-handed classic fuselage, not too big, not too small. Not great, not terrible. Stylish and simple, one-handed flexible control, comfortable grip, small size, does not take up too much space, let a person hands all over. Um, okay, and you have the dimensions there, and then you have mobile phone and mini mobile phone next to it. Yes, because that's what mobile phones look like nowadays. They look like, you know, phones from the 80s. That's what we all use nowadays instead of our generic slabs that we all carry around with us nowadays. No, we all carry the retro ones. Clear large screen, wider field of view, four inch HD screen, four inch high definition screen, large icon color, natural font larger, icon clearing disc, what? <sighs> 4-inch high-definition screen, large icon color, natural font larger, icon clear and distinguishable, hard not easy to scratch, look comfortable. The upgrade screen is clearly visible, strong body VT protection screen? What did I just read? Is this basically all saying that they have glass on the screen, that's it? Probably. Wonderful moment, touch the heart, rear HD camera, post HD imaging system can capture more details, bringing ultra clear image horizon, are large pieces at hand, imaging details amazing. And you got the one camera. Just at the bottom there, looking looking good. I'm still confused as to what I'm reading right now. Wonderful moment, a lot of considerable. Telescopic telephoto lens can achieve multiple optical zoom, multiple hybrid zoom, and digital zoom, close range, find a new horizon. Should I just not react to any of these and just read them and let you all just figure out what's going on? It's probably easier if I do that. We'll catch the light, we'll catch the bloom. Highlights, but no exposure. Dark details clearly retain every blue moment. Ah, oh, but they're skippies though. Fine pixels, large texture, meet the needs of different scenes of personalized shooting, easy to shoot a large film. Yes. Okay, yes. The moment of shooting, beauty is present. Video strength selfie moment. The new high definition front facing camera, selfie stunning clarity, can take a beautiful selfie and the light is insufficient. Each shot looks radiant. Does anyone want to guess what the megapixel count on the front camera will be? Probably two, maybe five. All weather 3D face unlock, safeguard information security, 3D bionic light sensing technology to identify nearly 10,000 features, dark light can also accurately unlock face recognition, bring you a new intelligent unlock experience, face recognition, password unlocked. What am I even reading right now? Also, look how big the phone is that they've photoshopped into this person's hands and the scan of their face is coming out of their face. It's futuristic. A beam of light in the dark, side flashlight switch side with strong light LED flashlight, brighter Brighter lighting, fucking, I am having so much trouble reading this listing, holy moly. With strong light LED flashlight, brighter lighting a wider range, also supports side key on off, night travel more at ease. Remote exposure, strong lighting, one button flashlight, LED strong light. In other words, there's a torch built onto this, so we can shine it around and see how bright it is. It looks pretty bright, but we'll see how bright it is. Retro debut, a comprehensive upgrade. The reason for choosing it, 4 inch HD color screen, a real flagship screen. <laughs> yes, because... 4-inch was flagship in, what, 2013, wasn't it? Yeah, okay. Rear HD lens, hold on to the fleeting moment. I will. Flagship, multi-core, all systems standard, build better performance. Multiple enhancements thanks to strong memory mean the experience is fluid whether you're playing a game or not. Multi-core, 64 gigs of memory. Uh, doesn't tell us what it is. Accordingly, it's a flagship nano-core. Advanced process with a fast CPU and a high-energy GPU. Probably a MediaTek MT67 something. Most likely. External antenna, encrypted anti-jamming, more stable reception. Antenna adopts metal rod, one-time molding, transceiver faster, better signal. All that to say we plunked an antenna on top and that should help reception. I'll try and tear it apart and see if there's anything inside of it as well. Smart systems make life easier. Android 12, let the user interface, simple non-interference, lightweight design, only for pure experience, whether it is drama games, can be silky smooth. And there's agent, android, spy man, terminator, robot, Android droid bloke with a pink tie doing his pose there. What am I? I don't even know what I'm doing, man. I seriously don't know what I'm doing. But here's this though. <laughs> sound the trumpet, sound your ears, surround stereo speakers. Ah, oh, yes, it's a trumpet. Okay, bring you clear full audio side volume button adjustment. You do not have to plug in the headphones. FM nice to listen to, listen to, listen to. <laughs> oh, shit. FM, nice to listen to, listen to, listen to. <laughs> oh, fuck, I didn't read that. <laughs> 
Oh, please take all that in. Oh, that's that's wonderful. Ugh, good, good stuff. Wait, we do have a spec sheet. Detachable antenna with the 4G band, the front camera, the flashlight, the rear camera, the 4-inch HD screen, the switch key, the side flashlight switch, the SIM card slot. The platform is MT6739CW. Sorry, we know what's in it now. Android 12, a 960 by 400 TFT LCD, Bluetooth, FM, Wi-Fi, hotspot, headphone, Type-C, USB, Type-C, batteries, 4600 milliamp hours and on the go support. And finally, one more picture is classic design highlight the true colors focus on fashion and portability. That's it. We can um, open up the package of this thing now. That listing was uh, confusing and all over the place, but that's okay. That's what we're used to. So here's the uh, here's the package. It took about a week and a half to get from China to Australia, which is pretty good. And also arrived on a Saturday as well. That's also a plus. Um, let me go ahead and unbox this $130 phone that I kind of know the specs of now and see if it's any good or if it's just complete garbage, which is probably the case. Hey, it might be really good. It's probably going to be just welcome at the end of the day, but we'll see. The box has a fake leather texture to it. All right, well, let's take a look. Oh, there it is there. Why does this look like the PP phone box? Get the phone and the antenna just plonked on there. Looks so oddball, but okay. Uh, around the box, nothing. QC pass though. And yeah, on the back is the W88 Pro, 2 gig and 16 gig, color black, both IMEIs there. Feel free to look them up and see what they correspond with. Made in China, of course you are. Some certification, that's probably all bullshit. All right, let's open up. Okay, well, a bit bigger than I was expecting. It's a bit of a chunk too. All right, cool. But we have a Type-C USB cable, the screen protector, a really big SIM eject tool. Well, I mean, it's not big, but it's kind of cool looking. The antenna, just there. Oh, an instruction manual that's actually bigger than like four pages. So it's, yeah, okay. What do we got? It's all in Chinese. Oh, no, 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 it's not all in Chinese, but most of it's in Chinese though. Uh, instructions to this manual. This manual describes concise information about how to use your mobile phone. If you want to quickly grasp the basic practical methods of this mobile phone, please refer to understanding the phone. All right, well, let's find understanding the phone. I don't know what understanding the phone is. This is just all the usual garbage there. Oh wait, it's probably here somewhere. We'll just ignore that. Don't worry about this. We'll pretend that we read all that and we understand everything that's going on. Yeah, it doesn't come with a charger. They do say that in the listing, that you have to prepare your own charger. They're saving the environment 20 years too late. Well, they're not saving the environment because they're still making this garbage bin in here. Let's take a look at Chonk. There he is. It's got a leather texture to it. It's thick. It's a thick one. Thickness wise, it's about 2.7 centimeters. That gives you an idea. Or, uh, what was it? Just over an inch. Chunky. All right, let me see how heavy it is. 180 grams. That's reasonable. Take the film off it, like that. No screen protector on it, but that's a really long screen. The aspect ratio is very oddball on it. Let's go around this thing then. So we've got the earpiece at the top, or probably a big spurker in there, most likely. Tiny little camera on the front there, probably two megapixels. The screen there, which is four inches. Little microphone down the bottom there. And at the side, we have the texture. It's all plastic though, but we do have big buttons there. Uh, at the top, we have the antenna connection and the big LED there. We'll have to see how bright it is. And then we have a big power button there. Oh, these are the actual volume keys. They're huge. Okay. Then we have the dedicated torch button, SIM tray, Type-C port, and another speaker. I mean, it did say it's got a trumpet in it, so, you know, sure. At the back, yep, there's the decorative cameras there. With the money spent into these, you could have put a 0.3 megapixel or something like that on there, just to say that we have two cameras. Instead, they've got to put that. But yep, W88 Pro there, and if I just peel that off, we get a look at the shiny back cover. Ooh. Is it glass or plastic? All plastic, but we do have glass on the front. So if I go ahead and screw the antenna on, that's it. There's there's the retro phone there. I mean, I'll say it looks pretty cool now, but um, if I press and hold this, does it come on? I was trying to turn the torch on. Okay, torch is dead at the moment. Let's see if there's actually any power in this. Uh, I'll take the SIM tray out. It did say it's dual 4G as well. With my Telstra SIM and micro SD card installed, we go ahead and see if this thing has any juice. It's a welcome. Of course it is. I said that. Uh, do you make any sounds though? Uh, don't scare me, please. I'll try and dump the system files from this too. Don't know how I'll go, but I'll try. I'm waiting for this to jump scare me. Okay. Well, that was anticlimactic. Just, just done a little. That's it. <laughs> we have booted up in about three seconds. No. Oh boy. Oh, does this have navigation gestures? Oh my god, it does. Whoa! Is this the first welcome with navigation gestures? 
No way. Oh my god, it is. That is a first. We actually have navigation gestures. I mean, it's, it's slow, but uh, we have gestures. 3G at the moment. Um, yeah, it, it's very laggy. That's okay. There we go, now we've got 4G. Cool. Um, let's see the torch. Oh, yep, all the torches on, okay. This is the torch. Wow, holy moly. Hey, DJ1000, um, you might have a competitor. That's really, really bright. Holy moly. What about the LED on the back then? Okay, that's useless. Can we have both on the same time? Yes, we can. We can have business in the back and party at the front, I, I guess. I just love how comically big the buttons are though. The quality of the screen on this doesn't actually look too bad. Being a four inch display, the colors actually do look fairly vibrant. I mean, you can see that it is somewhat low resolution, but for this, and the price as well, not bad at the moment. Although I can say you can get some secondhand flagship phones for about a hundred bucks now. That will definitely beat this, but for a brand new phone that's 130 bucks, the display's okay. I think this phone is more of a novelty than anything. I don't think anyone's really gonna purchase this to do, oh God, the flashlight's still on. Better not do that because I don't want the battery dying on me. This is more of a novelty than anything else because um, I really don't think anyone's gonna wanna purchase this because of just how thick it is. Application-wise though, it looks fairly stock. There's nothing on here. YouTube's not even installed, but I wonder if there's anything dodgy in the system files though. Um, oh, bit of a laggy sort of thing there. I mean, this does look like Android 12. VOLT on the SIM card as well. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, flashlight, do not disturb, airplane mode, location, auto rotate and battery saver, screen recorder, mic access and nearby share. That's pretty much it. And jumping straight into settings. See how weird the aspect ratio is though. It's just, it's so tall. Network and internet, we have Wi-Fi, and we should get five gigahertz, I believe. We certainly do. How's the G board on this? Uh, that's that's really compact. I can do this. I think I got it. A bit painful typing my password, but I've done it. Look, gestures, that's amazing. Actual gestures on this thing. I'll go mobile networks and seeing VOLTE and preferred network type saying 4G, I believe this is a 4G device. There's no problems about that. While we're in network, let me give this thing a call and see what the call quality's like. Will it still be flutey phone? Oh, that's boring. Does it sound good? Oh, no. Oh, it sounds okay. Honestly, it sounds fairly average. I'll splice in what the earpiece and the microphone sound like for you all and uh, we'll continue on. This is the quality of the earpiece on the Soyuz W88 Pro through the Big Spurker. And it sounds okay from my testing, but this is with VOLTE and it should sound clear, but it's more louder than anything, not clear. But I don't know, does it sound good in this little test? Any interference you're hearing is probably because of my microphone. Let's swap to the microphone and see how that sounds. And holding the behemoth in my hands, this is the microphone quality of the Soyuz W88 Pro. And this sounds not too bad. During the camera test, it's a little quiet, but now it's uh, pretty good. Is it average? Is it really good? Is it terrible? I don't know. You let me know. I think it sounds pretty good. Not the best, but eh, it'll do for this thing. And that's cool quality on this thing. It sounds okay. Let me see if I take the antenna off, do I lose reception? I don't think this serves any purpose apart from looking fancy. Uh, so I'll just put that back on there and when I tear it down, I'll see if it's uh, functional or if it's just decoration, probably decoration. Connected devices, no NFC, no, nothing there. Let's see all of the applications on this. It looks fairly stock, but is there anything hidden? Android S Easter egg, so it actually is 12. Amazing. Hi, it's Smalls from the future. I'm editing the video right now and unfortunately when I was going through this, it was out of focus the entire time. So I'm wondering in future videos, do I need to show this apps list or just skip it completely? I do like to just browse through it just in case I do see something quick, but you can see all my apps that I've installed on here. There wasn't too much that I did see. I think there was something right down the bottom called something switch, smart rat switch. There, I'll open up in Quick Shortcut Maker, but yeah, let me know down in the comments below if you think I should keep showing this or just skip it entirely. In battery, it doesn't say too much there, but I should do a battery test on this and see how long it'll last. Just curious to see. I'll have to see how fast the charging speed is on this as well. Storage is just 16 gigabytes with my micro SD card in there, so all good. Sounds, we have all the volumes there. The phone ringtone was Andromeda, that's right. Sound enhancements, we have best loudness which will be cool to test. Let's have a look at the wallpapers. What have we got on here? So we have that, which is from, I was gonna say Apple, but I don't think it's from Apple. Then we have gold thing there, something. I'll just keep it as that, that'll be good. Accessibility actually has quite a few options in it because it's running Android 12. Security, we have face unlock, but do we have fingerprint? No, we'll just 
stick with swipe. Face unlock though is just going to be the usual face unlock, but oh. Why does face unlock never work on any of these phones nowadays? Nope. Um, maybe I have to set a pin? Now does it work? There we go. There it is. Use the face for unlock. Off we go. It's a little bit off there, but it's fine. Yeah, all good. All right, take a photo of my face. Hello? Yeah, look in all directions. We want every every angle so we can put on a dodgy server in the middle of China. Yeah. <laughs> Registration is timed out and ended. Okay, let's just leave face unlock. Privacy, location, safety, emergency, passwords, accounts, Google, Duraspeed, system. Can I actually change the um, navigation? I can. I can switch it to three button, which is good because I'd rather three button navigation than the gestures. System update? Be hilarious if we get a system update on this. Yep, up to date, June 5th, 2023. We will never get an update on a welcome device. It will never happen. In about phone for the W88 Pro, it doesn't have a whole lot, but we have the build number, custom build version, software updates, and if I enable developer options, and then re-enter my pin, I've enabled developer options. Oh, there's another updater. So it's the R390 3C. All right, well, let's see. The latest version, yep. Now going to the Easter egg, should show Android 12. There we go, we have Android 12. I will say at this point in time, I'm filming this after I've done pretty much everything else, but I had some issues with storage and I decided to boot into recovery menu and it came with Android 10 at the top. So keep that in mind. Okay, well that's everything in about phone. Actually coming back to performance, it's, it's pretty laggy. It's okay for the most part, but like, you know what I mean? It's 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 pretty uh pretty lacking. Android 12 is a lot heavier for the CPU that's in this, as well as only two gigs of RAM. It's gonna struggle, but it's a welcome with Android 12, so that's got to be worth something there. So let me quickly just go through the default apps, and then I'll put my own on here and go from there. So clock, gallery, settings, been through calculator. Is it rad? Yep, it's rad. Awesome. Should we do speaker test now? We may as well. Go on, blow my eardrums away. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. I think it has stereo speakers. Because holding that there, I don't know. It could be. All right, big spurker power. Okay, yeah, it's, it's a big spurker. Oh. oh, that's... Oops. Stop, 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 stop. Pause. Okay, kind of a big spurker. That doesn't sound that good, though. But I'm convinced that there is a speaker down there, though. It sounds like there is. Let me try the terrible song that I made and never done anything with. Why does it pop up with a notification there? Hey, put the volume down. There we go. It's alright. Nothing special. But I'm trying to work out if there's actually a speaker down the bottom or not. I think there is. But look at this though. If I start playing it, it comes with a notification that I'm playing it. Okay, at this point in time, I'm not too sure if there is two speakers or not. I can't wait to tear it down and find out. Calendar looks like the standard calendar. I guess we can allow. Yep. All good. Sound recorder. Looking like that since Android 4. File manager is the stock file manager. Yep. That'll do it. And camera, which is bare bones, but we do have focus. Oh, there we go. Yep, it kicked in. Doesn't look like we can do a whole lot here though. Settings, we have five megapixels on the back. Video, can we at least do 1080p on this? We can do 640 by 480 on this. That's good. 
Okay, and the front camera looks a little something like that. Can we do anything with this? 640 by 480 video as well, and it's probably two megapixels, I'd say. Oh, we do have HDR on the front camera. Was that on the uh, back camera too? Five megapixels as well on the front camera. There's HDR on the front camera, but not on the rear camera. That makes sense. Well, let me go ahead and test this out for a couple of days. See how it goes. I'll take some photos and videos with this. I'll also do a demo and show you how bright the flash is outside. And then we'll come back and keep taking a look at this thing. But I'll let you know how the battery goes and charging speeds and all that sort of stuff when we come back. But enjoy the quick camera montage. I somehow took a photo, but all right. I'm outside at night time doing the camera test for the Soyuz W88 Pro. The one thing I forgot to mention in this review is the side button for the LED. So if I lock it and I just press it, it switches on. So if this is in your pocket and you accidentally push it against something, it's going to just switch that on. Even when the screen's off, it comes on. It is super bright though, like holy moly. This thing is crazy bright. Yeah, I'm standing like 10 meters away from the lemon tree and it's looking a little something like that. Wow, not bad at all. Look, make my shoes wider. Ripley. Hi. Do you like this camera? Here is the loaf. Go to hell it run, loaf. No? Okay. Testing video quality on the Soyuz W88 Pro. Uh, is that the name of it? I think it is. And this is what the camera quality looks like. Does it look good? I mean, it's 480p. What can I say about 480p? Apart uh, from, uh, it's 2024, and a brand new phone is doing 480p. But it's a welcome though, so it's, uh, it's accepted. It's fine. It's good. Um, it's a bit of a, you know, a bit jumpy sort of thing, but I mean, it's, it's fine for the most part. It's 480p. It looks average, but you know what? It, it'll do for this camera. At least you can hold the antenna as a bit of a stabilization sort of thing. See? Uh, that doesn't help. <laughs> and uh, the the brick wall, and then these two fellas. It's a, it's a bit jumpy, but you know, uh, if you're looking for kind of old school looking footage, this is the camera for you. Look at the sky; it looks beautiful. And then the far away icon looks like that. Can you see breeze there? We've got autofocus, but I don't know if it's helping. Yeah, that's what daytime looks like. All right, let me show you night mode and see if that looks any better. Testing the LED flash of the Soyuz W88 Pro, and you can't see anything. If I go right up close to the progress, you can see uh, the rear LED is not that powerful. Also, is there a blue? There's a blue. <laughs> There's a blue. Uh, yes, there is a blue. Um, it's uh, it's not the best, but I think you get the idea that um, it's 480p. <laughs> I can't really say much else about 480p. Um, the antenna is super helpful, though, to hold it and, you know, keep it steady, kind of, sort of. Uh, yeah, you can't see the lemon tree or anything like that. Um, but the top LED is bright, I can tell you that. Testing the front camera on the Soyuz W88 Pro. It looks smooth, even though it's at 480p. Um, okay, it's not that smooth. I take that back. 
it's a little um you know <laughs> do i look good though i mean slight detail kind of a portrait effect going on there it's so weird holding this thing though um but it's also good because it's chunky and it's you know heavy so you can just sort of hold it out there and off you go or you can hold it by the antenna if you want there you go cool looking selfie there you know just go hello and then go hello and then hello um is it anything special no i'll be nice to it i'll give it a pass just it's acceptable it's okay We're back. You've just seen all the photos and videos that I took with the Soyuz W88 Pro. And what do I think of the photos? It's decent enough for a five megapixel camera, megapixel, megapixel, megapixel. Look, it's good enough for five megapixels. However, the photos, if you've seen the camera test, are not in 2560 by 1920. They are in this, 3072 by 1728, which is still 5 megapixels. However, the camera maker is Runyi. I just thought that was funny. And the front camera also being 5 megapixels, it's okay as well. It's acceptable, got some detail in there. But they are very bare bones cameras. And 480p video on the back and front. What can I really say to 480p on a device in 2024? Uh, it, it looks fine i guess that'll do i don't want to talk about camera for too much longer because it's not really that important but what i do need to update you on is performance battery and other issues i've had let's start off with battery i left it for about 128 hours and it dropped to 34 percent from 100 percent. so there is a big enough battery in this that may hold up well however when i started using it though i just noticed the battery life draining very very fast so i don't know if it'll be the 4000 odd milliamp hour battery that it advertised so i'll definitely have to see when i tear this down this only charges at 5 volt 1 amps and it takes forever to charge i think i left it for about eight hours or so and then it finally got back to 100 percent one thing i want to check as well does this have reverse charging didn't it advertise that it does no, I'm charging this phone from my phone. Okay, so no, that doesn't work. Big battery, but you can't do much with it. As you also seen when I done the LED test outside, uh, yeah, you just press it and it's on. Super bright LED though. Several times when I've picked it up, I've accidentally pressed it and I've just went, oh shit, okay, turn that off. And you can't switch this key off completely. It's just, it's stuck there. So if you were to buy this, uh, you'd constantly be doing this, which would definitely drain battery life. Also, this antenna is useless. I'm convinced of it because I walked around outside and I took it off, was seeing the reception, and it stayed the same the whole time. It doesn't improve call quality, doesn't do anything. I think it's just literally for decoration. You'd be better off in the end taking this thing off because it's just an annoyance. I'd much rather use it like this, but I guess that's for the whole retro form factor thing. But in this way, it'll actually fit in your pocket and not have this stupid thing sticking out. I mean, if this had like a case, you could have attached it to your belt and looked pretty awesome with it. I don't think anyone's gonna wanna do that. The last thing that I have to say is the performance of this thing. It is so slow low and I had some issues with the internal storage when I was trying to copy the photos from the internal storage to my PC it kept on crashing all the time and I thought okay maybe I'll just boot into recovery and clear the cache I boot into recovery but there was no option to clear the cache even though at the moment it's you know fairly smooth and you know things are opening up quite fast once I started using this and doing more than just sitting on the main screen it just chugs you'll see very soon once I start opening up more applications I did say earlier assuming that it's Android 12 that it is a bit heavy running on the hardware that's in this but we still haven't confirmed the hardware so that's pretty much all the updates I have so we'll continue on because I've installed applications to test things I've put YouTube on quick shortcut maker device info hardware CPU system info Geekbench Freedom Minecraft I just see Minecraft on the Play Store and thought I'd install it we can try it quickly and San Andreas Genshin Impact does come up on the Play Store and I can install it but I don't have enough internal storage for it Genshin Impact would probably run at about 0.5 frames a second if that yeah, half a frame a second sounds about right, to be fairly honest. I mainly just want to tear this thing apart because I want to see the battery and what's going on inside of this. In hindsight, I'm probably not going to take this apart, but I just want to see if the connection for it is actually hooked up to anything. So let me show you Chrome on this. Look how terrible the keyboard is. I mean, it's not terrible. It's just so small. Wait, why am I typing in keyboard? Oh my God. Let's go into AliExpress. Go on, speedy. Yep, there it is. Come on, you can load the rest of AliExpress. There you go. Nope. Oh, it's it's loading. <laughs> um, does, does that give you an idea that it's uh, pretty slow? Look at how it's jumping in Chrome. It's just 
super, super laggy. But like, I guess for the most part, browsing works fine, but don't expect too much out of this thing. It just works. Okay, moving on to YouTube. I wanna see Costa Rica and Stretch. What resolution will it even play at? It's all right, okay. Oh boy, oh boy. It's fine, it's only just a YouTube video. Ah, uh, should we try 1080p 60fps? Yeah, okay. Yeah, during the camera test, you can just hold it like this if you want. Or well, it's probably just better if you hold it like this for more stability. All right, what does it look like? Show me 1080p. Does it look nice? Ah. Definitely uh, looks very low resolution, that's for sure. Let me try 720p, perhaps? This display is not even 720p, but I just want to see what it looks like if we get something. Come on, buddy. Oh, there we go. What if I zoom in? Hey, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, kind of. It's getting there. No, it's not. Okay. Speaker sounds good though, but I still don't know if it's dual speakers or not. I'm definitely getting a good idea of the performance of this though. There's just moments where it gets really unresponsive and then some moments where it's like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll work. Let's open Geekbench, Let's see what exactly we're dealing with. Oh, we're dealing with a Runyi W88 Pro, supposedly running Android 12. Then why did it say Android 10 recovery? I'll show you recovery. Recovery looks a little something like this. So you hold power and volume up, give it a second. There we go and then you choose recovery our little buddy there he's looking uh, very blue you do power and up and there you go that's what it says so when i say in android 10 i'm thinking wait this thing actually runs android 10 but nope it actually runs android 12. i don't know why it says it there though that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me so if you know what's going on feel free to explain that mt6739cw i'll run the benchmark guess we can we can wait it's good that it stands up also lay it on the side or that side if you want or you could have it upside down. No, you can't have it upside down. You can have it upside down if you take this off. It'd be so weird if you're out in public just talking away on this thing. Maybe I should show you all a demo of what it looks like in a pocket as well as next to my face. Yeah, hold your horses, mate. Yeah, get out anal recovery services. How can I help you? What'd you do, mate? What'd you do that to your anal for, mate? Nah, you, you're not supposed to do that. No, 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 no. We're, we're anal. Not... You're painful. Just put it away. Pretend it's not there. Don't worry about it, okay? Don't call me again. Idiot. It's finally done. Oh, wow. We got 120 for single and 365 for the multi-core score. So I'll display some other scores to the side, which it's on par with the Unihertz T200, which had the MT6737T in it, as that scored 130 for single and 394 for the multi-core score. As a comparison, it's almost the same as the Snapdragon 430 in single, which is something. But that took a long time to finish. I think it took about 13 or 14 minutes, maybe? Probably longer, I'm not too sure. It says two gigs of RAM there, it says Android 12, so I think we should keep moving on because these are just numbers that probably don't mean too much to a lot of people, but to me, I sort of get a good idea of what's going on here. I think we should test Doom first. I want to see like ultra wide Doom because this is kind of like an ultra wide display. I mean, I don't even know what aspect ratio this is. Hopefully device info hardware tells me. Before we try free Doom, I'll hook up a keyboard. Device name is Android Blue Droid? Okie dokie. Well, the Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Maybe not today. Oh, there it is. All right, so I'll just... God, that was an old notification tone. There we go, perfect. Optimal Doom experience. I don't think Doom will lag like it did on the Welcome S26 Ultra Plus thing. I think it'll run fine. Ah! We'll just put that down a little tiny bit. There it is. Not that you can really see it though, but it's smooth. Wee! Well, I'll just speed run my way through it then. Yeah, it's fine. Move. Out of the way, buddy. 
Oh, he's over here. Okay. Ooh. 17 seconds. No, 40 seconds. Really? Oh, huh. okay. Not as fast as I thought. That's Doom in this weird aspect ratio. I mean, we've seen it really weird on the uh, on the pen I reviewed, but hey, it's perfectly fine. So that's good. I'm curious to see how Minecraft will run. Does anyone know the last time I ran Minecraft on a phone? It was probably like two and a half years ago, maybe more. I don't remember, but let's see if it's changed in the slightest bit. Even though this is the trial edition, um, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. Wow, it's uh, it's it's super like. <laughs> see how long it is. <laughs> Okay. Also, I've just noticed that the um the plastic is scratched up here. I haven't even had it against anything that would scratch it. Get rid of this stupid thing so I can actually play it properly. Ah, uh, useless finagly twiddle bit. Uh -huh. It's warm enough down the bottom and the back. Actually, the whole thing's warm. What am I talking about? Be interesting to see what cooling they've implemented in this because it's it's fairly thick. Surely it can't be all made of plastic. It has to be some quality components in here. We're getting there. Sometime today. Come on, MT6739CV or whatever it was. Little hamster in there, he's doing his best. He's going round and round circles. Oh, it's fine. I spoke too soon. Um. Uh. Uh. Oh, 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 wait. Okay, it's it's a little choppy. Just, just a little bit. Uh, if you look at the ground, it's... Or if you hug a tree, it's uh, smooth. Uh, if you look at the sky, it's smooth, but uh, that might give you a good idea of performance now. Uh, it's a bit, bit chuggy in Minecraft. Should we move on to San Andreas? I think so. I'm going to bump everything up to max because I have no faith in this. Hey, prove me wrong, phone. I want you to play at 60 FPS. Oh, might be fine. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, boy. Oh, wow, I've never seen San Andreas run this slow. Holy shit. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, that, that's that's good. I'm happy to check the specs now because I want to see if it actually is on Android 12 or not. Device info hardware. So it's 960 by 400, MT6739, supposedly Android 12, 2 gigs of LPDDR3, MT6739, Power VR Rogue. System all looks good. It says Android S, so it has to be Android 12. The first ever welcome device with Android 12. Amazing. Also, five-point multi-touch. What is the aspect ratio? I don't know, I can't work it out. Two gig, 16 gig, camera, five megapixel, and five megapixel. Battery, 4,600 milliamp hours, it says. Sensors, accelerometer, light and proximity. I don't think there's any sensors in there, though. Check the other one, and this should tell me everything in this. Well, there you go, Run Ye, W-O-E-A -E Pro, Run Ye. What a name, Run Ye. It's Android 12, 16 gig, two gig. Oh, does the aspect ratio show in here? Uh, no, but it's close enough. Capacity, yep, 2,946,000 milliamp hours, close enough. 25 degrees for the CPU. Tad bit hotter than that. Cameras, five and five. All right, quick shortcut maker then. Last thing, before I tear this thing apart and finally find out what's in this thing. Also, the apps aren't quite optimized for a screen that's... All right, so what have we got? Face unlock, well, that's just useless on this, and it's too laggy for face unlock anyways. You'd be staring at it for five minutes, waiting for it to actually do anything. What I'm looking at is that switch rat thing or whatever it was called. Wait, is it even here? Uh-oh. Ah! What have I done? <laughs> what the? <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, I'm stretched. Uh, that was... That was fun. I've been here for a couple of minutes trying to find that application and I can't find it. It's not here. I'm searching for it, nothing comes up, so I have no idea. I've installed a bunch of applications to see, and I get a whole bunch of factory modes. Okay, that one. Oh, okay. No, oh, okay. Okay. Okay, I found the IMEI stuff. Uh, soft version there. I wonder if there's a hard version. <laughs> nope. Ooh, engineer mode. Nope. I got it to English.
Okay, that's the same. Nope. I've tried absolutely everything that I can with this to try and open that up and I can't find it. I'll try and dump the system files from this and you can go through them in the description. That's if I can dump the system files from this. That's what I wanted to open and I can't think of a way to open it. It's very, very odd, but that probably would be to change the boot animation maybe or do something. Also, I've noticed the battery's holding up now. Battery wasn't holding up when I was doing the camera test, but anywho, that's pretty much everything that's on this, to be honest. As I've stated a couple of times, I just want to tear this thing down. But to give a quick conclusion, you can spend $130 for a much better phone on AliExpress. An old flagship will beat this. This is just purely a novelty, but it's also the first welcome with Android 12. So that's a win. It's also a welcome with 4G VOLTE, which is not something new. And it also has a weird aspect ratio and a, and a retro design. It stands up, has a bright LED. It's got some good things going for it, but it is really just a novelty at the end of the day. It is just a stupid novelty that only this idiot would buy. I don't think anyone would actually want to really purchase this to use as a phone because it's not rugged or durable or anything. If you drop this, it's all plastic. It'll just shatter. Uh, let's just tear it down and see what's inside of it. Hopefully I don't kill it though, because I still need it to work. I'll be very gentle taking it apart. Very, very gentle, okay? Does the back plastic come off first? Oh, okay, well that happened. <laughs> Sure. I assume that the plastic comes off first. Okay. Got it. <laughs> they really didn't want anyone to get inside of this thing. Oh my god, it's hollow. <laughs> oh my god. It's hollow. Wait, folks. Okay. Alright. Um, if anyone asks, I didn't do that. Look at that. Look at this. <laughs> I switched it on to. Okay, this looks like an absolute clusterfuck inside of this thing. Hopefully it's not boot looping now. No, it's not. Wow, that was a lot of adhesive. Like, that's that's some strong stuff that they've got on there. This is going to take ages to put back together. I don't even know where that piece went from the back cover. From where I accidentally... Uh... Okay, with six screws removed, I think that's all of them. I should be able to just... Pop this out. There we go. Okay. Oh, no way. Oh, no way. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, everyone. We gotta take each bit of this in very slowly. There is the back. The decorative cameras are on there. Alrighty. Now we're inside of it. The battery is two batteries stuck together. Ah, uh, yep, yep, okay. This is an absolute mess inside of this. Let's start by lifting off the battery. Oh, okay, the whole motherboard just... Yeah, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Ah, there's a flex cable on here. Oh boy, uh-oh, what have I done? Oh no, oh shit. I do not like any part of this whatsoever. We do have some graphite tape on there, which is good. That is actually a 4,600 milliamp hour battery. Two stuck together. So both of these flex ribbons are soldered to the motherboard. So I can't pull the board out any further than it is. I can't take the shielding off either. Taking a look at the top of the board, you can see there the sticker that says 16 gig and two gig there. Microphone, type C port. It's definitely looking like a reused motherboard that they've chucked in this, which is to be expected, I guess. So I'll just, kind of put that back down at the moment. I just want to see if I've killed it or not. I don't think I have. It should all still work. Oh, thank God, okay. <sighs> this is not easy. Well, I've definitely answered the question. Is there two loudspeakers? Nope, just one big spurker. Just lifting out <laughs> big spurker there, that's it. The antenna serves absolutely no purpose whatsoever. If you see just in there, there's nothing going to it. There's no wires, there's no nothing. The wires attach to the big spurker. So that antenna is literally useless. And the big LED has just this little metal piece there and that's all just wide there. But that's a big spurker though. Tiny little front camera, but it's five megapixels supposedly. And the rear camera has a code on it just there if you can see that. I'll give you a bit of an idea of who made this camera. Okay, that was really iffy trying to take this thing apart. I'll just put the wires back in there. 
any movement to the back camera. Nah, just focusing. That's it. The LED is actually um, a fairly big one in this. Yeah, I just, I don't want to take the shielding off. I'm pretty happy knowing what specs are in this thing, but just the 4600 milliamp hour battery and just all this empty space. You could store some things in here like a mini Rubik's cube or a 20 sided die for added weight. Maybe you want to put your local arcade coins in here for later on, or maybe you'd like to put a Hot Wheels car in here. Okay, maybe not that. What about a McDonald's token, you know? If you go to Macca's and you want to redeem your prizes, you know, you... endless possibilities of what you can fit in there. That battery is probably now going to flop around like a fish. Hey, caramba. Oh, no, I just, I just ripped more of the tape off. That's okay. I'm good with calling it here, I think. I'll just put that battery back down into place. Put the back cover back down. If it fits, do you fit? It's gonna take me forever to take this adhesive off, so I'll just pretend like it's not there and just stick that back on. We'll put our totally useless antenna on there. Glad I found out that it was useless. And I'll switch it on, and I'll display the full specs to the side of the device. Feel free to take all that in while I uh, clean all the fingerprints off the display. I'm sorry about that. Uh, that's what's inside of this. First welcome with Android 12. And a 4600 milliamp hour battery. Is this actually the first welcome that hasn't lied about the battery capacity? Although, I will say, this isn't really a welcome. No, because it's displaying welcome right now. It's a Soyuz, but it's, it's still a welcome. Doesn't matter. You know what I'm talking about. Very interesting novelty device, that's for sure. Yeah, everything still works. Oh! <gasps> Oh, poof. it's just so laggy that the volume keys weren't working for a bit there. Okay, it's fine. It, it works. It's good. Can I leave it now? We're good. We're done. We're finished. I think that's absolutely everything that I needed to look at on this thing. I've done all my usual testing and I'm pretty sure I know what's going on with this. So um, I guess that's the review of this one done. The W88 Pro Soyuz thing off AliExpress for $130 Australian. It's a novelty thing that looks cool on my desk. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. If someone walks in, wow, what's that? That's a brick phone. Oh, wow, oh, it's got a touch screen on it. Oh, ooh. See how exciting it was for five minutes. I hope you all enjoyed this one. If you've made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for sticking through this one. I really do appreciate it. And somehow my mouse mat's like slightly crooked. There you go, fixed it. But if you had to use timestamps to skip through this really long, rambly review of a cheapo tech device that no one's ever gonna buy, um, then that's all good. That's why they're there. So you can just... That will do it for another installment in the iWish series, looking at the brand spanking new W88 Pro from Soyuz slash Welcome. Let me know what you thought of this one down below, and I'll try and dump the system files from this. I haven't done it yet, but I will try my best. It'll be interesting to hear what you folks have to say about this thing. It's pure novelty. It's somewhat usable. Don't buy one. I bought it so you don't have to buy it. Anyways, I'll shut up now. I'm rambling. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it as always. If I've missed anything as well through the review, feel free to let me know. I know I sometimes forget little tiny things in the review. So uh, yeah, feel free to just let me know if, if I've missed anything. Take care. Stay safe. Be good people. And I'll see you all in the next one. I've got more reviews to do this month. I've only got like 10 days left of this month, but I'll work it out. Until the next time I see you all, take care of yourself. Keep being awesome. And I'll see you all very soon. I'm going to bed now because it's 11 o'clock at night. And this thing made my head hurt. Bye. Anal merch. Get yours today from AliExpress. Um, does anyone want anal merch? <laughs> sure, why not? Got a, got a beanie, got a cap as well, got a t-shirt. So, you know, you can deck yourself out in the whole gear and walk around and be like, yeah, I work for anal. Don't take that out of context, please.